Leviathan, a sea monster from Mesopotamian and Canaanite mythology. How did this figure become a philosophical symbol of chaos? Then a demon and eventually part of a left-hand path and Laveian Satanism? Whew, there's lots to cover. Let's get on with it, shall we? Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Angela Puka and welcome to my symposium. I'm a PhD and a university lecturer and this is your online resource for the academic study of esotericism, witchcraft, paganism and all religions and spiritualities entertaining the belief in and the practice of magic. This video is brought to you by Angry Abacus, a kind supporter of the symposium who commissioned a video on this topic. Thank you for doing that. And I'd also like to thank my friend and fellow YouTuber, Dr. Justin Sledge, who helped me figure out how to structure this video's content. Leviathan is the Hebrew name of a mythical monster associated with the sea. The term is first found in an Agaritic text, and its etymology is linked to meanings such as the twisting one, the wreath-like, and the circular, which corroborate the association with a snake-like being. Since both in Agaritic and Biblical texts this term is used as a proper name, etymology won't suffice to understand this figure. The concept of Leviathan seems indeed related to Rahab, which is likely a late exilic adaptation drawn from the Babylonian theology of Marduk. Also, some assimilation of Egyptian religious traditions and the Leviathan concept could have occurred in southern Palestine and northern Egypt already during the Hyksos period. In Isaiah 27.1, we've got an exemplary story explaining the role of the Leviathan. When Yahweh brings his wrath over a corrupt creation and spares only his faithful people, he is described as drawing his sword against the Leviathan to kill the dragon which is in the midst of the sea. Thus, Leviathan's demise seems to coincide with the restoration of the vineyard Israel, which suggests a historical and political role of this figure as well, identified with chaos. Interesting to notice that, according to First Enoch, Leviathan is a female dragon located at the bottom of the sea above the sources and will be served as part of the eschatological banquet for the righteous one. As John Day highlights, all the passages in the Hebrew Bible that talk about God's control over the sea at times of creation presuppose the archaic worldview shared by the Israelites and other people from the ancient Near East, that there is a cosmic sea above, and that's where the rain comes from, and below the earth we walk on, from which lakes and rivers emerge. Many ancient Near Eastern mythological motifs, particularly those relating to the Chaos Camp, which is the primordial battle against the forces of chaos, found expression in the Hebrew Bible and were further developed in post-biblical and rabbinic literature. We often find here representations of insubordinate forces by elements of water, a clear threat to a peaceful existence, considering that the creation was believed to be surrounded by water. Nili Wazana notes that unpredictable qualities of water fittingly depict chaos, whether as a threatening natural element or employing mythical representations in the deified figure of a sea monster such as the Leviathan. Overall, Leviathan appears in only one pre-biblical text, 
and is mentioned six times in the Bible. And yet, as we will see, such a being has had a significant impact over the ages, getting reshaped and reinterpreted, but still mostly associated with concepts like evil and chaos. The post-biblical development of the Leviathan moves in two main directions, one which may be defined as naturalistic and demythologizing that identifies it as a whale. We can see echoes of this less religious and more metaphorical interpretation of the Leviathan in Thomas Hobbes' adoption in his political philosophy. The second development of the Leviathan is more apocalyptic and has been more influential. This continues to consider it as a dragon or a sea serpent and will lead to the later process of demonization. Brian Levak explains that the transformation of the devil into a creature that filled Christians with fear, shock and repulsion began in the 14th century and increased during the confessional struggles of the Reformation era. In these centuries, images of the devil became more repugnant. At the same time, the devil's immediate subordinates, especially the sea monster Leviathan, who became one of the princes of hell in the Middle Ages, were depicted as jaws of hell, where the damned were trapped and subject to eternal punishment. The Leviathan becomes a demonic entity with whom the esoteric practitioner can interact in the late Middle Ages and the Renaissance. We indeed see it appear in the book of the sacred magic of Abramelin the Mage, translated by McGregor Mothers, as one of the four chief spirits, alongside Lucifer, Satan and Belial. The Leviathan appears in the same capacity and connected to the element water in Cornelius Agrippa's De Occulta Philosophia, as well as in its inspired The Magus by Francis Barrett. Here the Leviathan is associated with the infernal realm and represented as chief of the devil. There are also literary examples of similes drawn between Satan and the Leviathan, the most notable being the one by John Milton in Paradise Lost. The Leviathan also features in the Call of Cthulhu by Lovecraft as the main antagonist, and in William Blake's artwork Behemoth and Leviathan of 1825 that illustrates the Book of Job. As explained in a previous video, the literary and romantic interest in demons and Satan played a significant role in the emergence of modern Satanism. And the Leviathan is no exception to that. Portrayed as the great dragon from the watery abyss and one of the four princes of hell, the Leviathan has an entire dedicated section in the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey suitably called the Book of the Leviathan. Here this figure is ritualistically connected to the element of water and the cardinal direction west. Even as a symbol, we find its substantial influence in Laveian Satanism, both in the sigil of Baphomet that has Leviathan written on the outer circle in Hebrew, albeit going the wrong way, as my friend Justin pointed out, and in the use of the so-called Leviathan cross. The latter, sometimes referred to as the cross of Satan, is also the alchemical symbol of the element sulfur, which has been long associated with the fire and brimstone of hell. Another left-hand path tradition that significantly encompasses the figure of the Leviathan in its cosmology is the tradition of Dragon Rouge, founded by Thomas Carlson in 1989. As Kenneth Granholm explains, the dichotomy of chaos and cosmos is central to the Dragon Rouge worldview. The cosmos embodies the manifested structures 
the physical world and the conscious mind. Whereas the chaos hints at something greater and primordial. The chaos is the source of all the potentiality that a magician can employ to reshape reality. And it's embodied by the symbol of the red dragon. Along this line, many primordial mythological beasts are seen as representations of the dragon. Among the latter, we find the biblical Leviathan, the serpent, at times associated with Satan, and Tiamat. Since they represent a wider and primordial reality, these dragons possess immense power and potential that the magician can tap into. It is the dragon who sets the magician on their path to self-deification, for it embodies the inner and outer power personified. This is it for today's video. Thank you again, Angry Abacus, for reaching out and commissioning a video on this topic. As for you, my kind viewer, if you like my content and want me to keep the academic fun going, please consider supporting my work with a one-time PayPal donation by joining memberships or my inner symposium on Patreon, where you will get access to our Discord server, monthly lectures and lots of perks depending on your chosen tier. And if you did like this video, don't forget to smash the like button, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and activate the notification bell so that you will never miss a new upload from me. Thank you so much for being here and stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now.